the, uh, the exact same for drugs. When you fail to provide a uh, drug specimen, urine specimen. Same thing, you go through a medical examination to determine whether or not you could. You gotta meet with a, a specialist to see if you have the, the lung capacity to do this. Very involved and could take days, weeks, if not 40 to 50 days. All right, another collector said, the employee did not sign the consent or the intake forms that we require. We told him that, we could, that he could not be tested for alcohol. If he didn't, it was a refusal. If someone doesn't sign the intake forms at the collection site, what do I mean by intake forms? The clipboard with 800 pages of stuff that you have to fill out? If the person doesn't want to fill that out, is that a DOT refusal? No. Right. Are they refusing to cooperate with the part of the testing process? No, not really. Part 40 doesn't mention any intake forms. That's not part of the testing process. The intake forms are the consent to, I will be tested, my insurance may be notified, I may blah, 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 blah. and it's a clipboard with the, with the pen with the teeth marks all on it that you have to fill out before you go in there, right? That one has nothing to do with the testing process. If someone doesn't want to fill that out and talk about their medical history on this form, well, good for them, I don't want to fill it out either. I'm just there to do an audit, lady. Like, why do I have to fill, fill this out? It's an FDA audit of your collection site. I'm not getting blood drawn. I don't have to list my allergies, right? Neither does your employee. If they don't want to fill out the clipboard that has nothing to do with the forms, it's not a DOT refusal. You can overturn that. Not overturn, you just don't call it a refusal. That one, I say you educate the collection site. You tell the collection site, Look, it's a DOT test, they don't have to do that. All right? Question. So the employee refuses to do this. Fine. The collector tells them, go back to your employer. They leave, they go back to the employer, the DER says, no, that's not a refusal. Does the DER then immediately resend them back? Say it's a random. Do they immediately send them back? That's sort of up to the DER, and it depends on a lot of circumstances. Like I said, it's not a clean situation. They would, if it, well, and a lot of times I've heard the collection site says, no, they, they fill us out, but they don't come here. And the DER says, all right, fine, I have to send them somewhere else, new collection site. So I, I, it depends on a lot of the circumstances and the judgment of the DER. All right, if you fail to undergo a medical examination for insufficient breath, that one's sort of easy to determine. These are all these are identical uh, to the to the drug ones, except for this one. Fail to sign step two of the ATF. That's as easy as it gets. Sign here. No. Okay. <laughs> That's a refusal. That's listed in the regulations. If they fail, if they do not want to sign step two, they put it in the remarks. Call the DER. Go to lunch. You know, case closed. And alcohol also has the catch-all. There's a catch-all for the alcohol portion as well. Uh, and this is in subpart N. All right, how about this one? On the way to the collection site, the employee told me he was going to probably test positive. I said, for drugs, and he said, yes. What do you do with that? You have the supervisor or the DER taking the employee. <laughs> keep, keep the thing going. And the worst part is when they say that, and then the test comes back negative. Like, oh, it's negative? Yeah. I was joking earlier. Now, you can't joke about adulterating it. If you admit that you've adulterated the specimen, they don't have to send it in. Here's the thing, you don't even have to have adulterated it. Now you're at the airport joking about a bomb, right? Did you pack this yourself? Oh yeah, I packed these bombs myself, TSA. Well, it's a stupid joke, and now you're on the no-fly list. The same thing can happen. For, for this. You're at the collection site, you say, oh yeah, I adulterated it, I poured that bleach in there. Well, even if they hadn't, that's now a refusal. Are they watching a the video? It's a lame dance party. So I put in, who can talk to everybody to, to come up with the account of what actually happened? Ultimately, it's a DAPM. Ultimately, is that. How about this one? When I took the employee aside and notified them of their requirement for random testing, she said she has to pick up her kids at 6 p.m. and can't do the test. 
This was 4.50 p.m. Just notify you ahead of time they have daycare issues. Yeah. It has to be a notification ahead of time. This one is really tricky. And this is where I get a bit sympathetic and I allow a little, a little bit, I don't want anyone quoting me on this one. But if someone's in a, something happens and someone, someone's at a collection site, because here's the thing, if you notify someone, they go to the collection site uh, and they take the test and they're in whatever, and they say, now I'm late for something. That's one thing. If you notify someone at noon, they, they're expecting to get off work at four. They get to the collection site and they wait for three hours at the collection site before they even get in. Now the DER has, that employee has a case, and I think the DER should have some sympathy to that case. Does that make sense? No one expected them to even be three hours before you got in there. Like now we're talking about like the rest of their life is disrupted for this. The DER should exercise some judgment there. You have a question? Did I answer your question? You did. All right. Test refusals? I'm sorry, George. Yeah. On that last one, it's 450. If they're at the collection site, should we say, hey, do your best? If they're there, yes. Okay. They have to they, they have to go through it, yes. I'm not saying because again, the precedent. You don't want to open up this can of worms. If they're there, they have to go through it. And if you want to be do someone a solid, they say, well, I have to pick up so and so, I gotta be. Um, I've seen it where the supervisor literally escorts them to pick the person up and brings them back under the supervision of the supervisor. Not ideal at all. Not ideal. But that was a solid, I thought, I, I thought they did them a solid. Again, 100% of the things I'm talking about are not ideal. Right? That's why you have the discretion. What I don't want is the, the, super, the, the, the DER, because I hear this out in the hallway, people come up to me. And they say, oh, you know what? It was the worst circumstance. She had nothing to do with it. It was all the collection sites' fault, or it was all the supervisor's fault. She was a but she, technically she didn't do it, so I had to call it a refusal. Like, that's not what these regulations are here. For those circumstances, you were allowed some discretion. You have, a DER has discretion. It has to be sensible judgment, though. You have to understand what we're, we're trying to do in all this. Right? Mm -hmm. it, should, it probably, it was not her fault, but, you know, technically she didn't proceed immediately, so... Because uh, well, there's a road fatality, and there's traffic, so she did get there 45 minutes late, just like everyone else did. Just like your supervisor who was in the same, you know, who's meeting her there. Like, you can't <laughs> bend on this a little bit. Use your professional judgment. Common sense. Common sense, yeah. All right, uh, if you normally avoid through self-catheterization and decline to do so, that's a refusal. That's pretty easy to determine. Uh, if the employee admits to having an adulterator substituted the specimen, uh, the MRO, if they admit it to the MRO, the MRO says that's a refusal. Again, don't joke around. I mean, the MRO would see a result anyway. But if it's negative and they said, but I, I adulterated it, swapped it out, it's negative, but it wasn't mine, it's my wife's. The MRO can say, good enough for me, that's a refusal. All right, uh, there are no MROs in here? Okay, I'm gonna skip that then, because these are for the MROs. This is what you need to do. These are your steps as a DER. When there's no confirmed report from the MRO that there's an adulteration or substitution or an admittance of, you perform preliminary review of the statements or documentation. You read through everything that you have. You determine that a refusal has occurred. You remove the employee from safety sensitive functions. Uh, you notify the employee, comes, obviously comes after the removal. Now you gather relevant statements, clarifications, and everything. If the refusal has occurred, someone says, well, I think this is a refusal. The first thing you do is remove the employee from safety sensitive functions. If the collector says, the guy threw a chair at me or whatever, you say, okay, the person's removed from safety sensitive functions. Now you can gather some information and figure out, well, let, let's, let's figure out what actually truly happened here. And you articulate to the employee that they've ref their refusal has occurred and you refer them to a substance abuse professional. Now, how do you describe with the employee? You describe the circumstances that led to your decision as the DER. You allow for additional facts from the employee during the conversation, 
But again, the burden of proof is on them. The leverage is with the collector in this case. And explain the consequences per company policy. If anyone sat through Craig's uh, presentation on how to build a policy, this is why he said you have to have your consequences listed out, because you need to point to it. Uh, confusion of DOT versus non-DOT? Well, it was a non-DOT test, but uh, we're going to call it a DOT refusal. That's no good. It has to be a DOT. If you're going to call it a refusal, make sure it's a DOT test. Uh, the intake forms at the collection site, they don't have to do it if they don't want. Uh, unclear account of what actually happened. Uh, or the well-meaning collectors giving bad instructions. Perfect example. Versus, I don't think I can go. All right, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you come back after lunch? All right, the collector's just trying to help them out. This happens a lot, believe it or not. A very well-meaning collector, they're new, and they're saying, okay, well, just, okay, go back out to the waiting room. I'm gonna pause this test, just go out, drink some water, we'll resume it when you can. They don't call it a shy bladder, they just say, they're just trying to help them out. Again, their heart's in the right place, but it's, it's wrong. Or, the MRO or the TPA, whoever's transmitting the letter, doesn't actually write refuse, refusal, or refused on the result. They just say, the person was unable to do this and I couldn't come up with, uh, and couldn't come up with sufficient evidence as to why, end of sentence. They need to say, I have deemed this a refusal. The MRO needs to be very clear that if they are calling it a refusal, they use that actual noun or verb. Okay, what do you do about it? Ask for more information. Get everything in writing. Everything must be in writing. <coughs> Actually quote what people say. Call them up. If they're not giving you an email account fast enough, you can call them up and say, just tell me what he said and what, what the employer, what, the, what you said and what the employee said. And just write it down, transcribe it. Here's the most important part of this entire presentation. You need to take the account of what you have, right? The body of evidence, uh, emails, what someone said, notification forms, at this time this happened, at this time you never showed up. And you need to be able to match it to a citation from part 40, okay? You need to be able to say, okay, these actions match up with this citation in part 40. And remember, there's a catch-all too, so if you can't get into one. <laughs> But be specific, did not proceed immediately. 40, you know, subpart I, uh, number three, whatever it is. If you can't match it up to an actual citation, it may not have been a DOT refusal. Right? This is very, very important. Because now it's not you just saying it. You are not arguing, eh, I think I think you refused. You're saying, the regulations say you refused. Now I'm required to do this. I'm required to remove you from safe sensitive duties terminate you or whatever, or send you to the, either way, send you to a substance abuse professional. And remember, it does matter. The refusal means that they are refusing to participate in a required program component. And it is a positive. And it disqualifies them from performing safety sensitive functions. That's the whole point of this. Preventing someone who has refused to participate in a safety program component from performing safety sensitive functions. That's, what, that's why we're we're doing this. All right, uh, you can look at the drug and alcohol regulatory updates. You can look at our letters of interpretation. You can host a one day training seminars so where we will go over this. That's it, it's lunchtime. I'm two minutes early. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Please make sure to either go on Wolva and do the survey. I am just blown away by all of the information they just provided to us. It's just mesmerizing just hearing all the finite details, some of the examples from the people from the crowd, but I think overall great information if you deal with FTA or FMCSA. Now keep in mind you want to take a look at that part 40 depending on which mode you actually deal with. I do appreciate you taking a listen today to Safety FM. I know that we did go a little bit longer than normal, but hopefully you enjoyed it and there was a lot of good information there. If you did enjoy the podcast today, please drop us a review at, at your favorite podcatcher. Hit the subscribe button or you can always come and visit us at either safetyfm.com 
on Twitter at SafetyFM or on our Facebook page at